Welcome back to Access Racing. I am Kevin, and this week I have another defunct snowcross for you. This is episode two, Avalanche Racing. For all of you who don't recall the name of this mid-2000s team, I bet you remember the look of their snowmobiles. An iconic blue on an otherwise red Polaris race sled. The look of Avalanche was flashy yet clean, thus making them a fan favorite even to this day. During my content search for this video, one online forum comment described Avalanche race sleds as the holy grail for the look of a sled. And I couldn't agree with this more. The professional team was founded by Michael and Bonnie Glefke and ran for five years between the seasons of 2003 and 2008. The team was based out of Glendon, Minnesota, which is a few minutes out of Fargo. For this video, I reached out to Michael and had a great conversation about Avalanche. Originally, the Glefke's family's snowcross journey started two to three years prior before the formation of the Avalanche professional team, with their eldest son racing at the Winter Thunder Race Park track in northern Illinois. Michael said it was racing after one weekend in Lake Geneva, the idea to really expand the team came about. Like most operations, they started small in an enclosed trailer, then they moved up to a 50-foot ATC, and with a new 53-foot Featherlight trailer that most of us remember. The first pro rider and mechanic that they had was Jamie Chaney. Chaney would later become the crew chief for Avalanche Racing and a pivotal member of the team. Michael said that Jamie is like a third son to him and recently they even joined him on a vacation with the rest of his family. This right here is what defines our sport. It's a tighter knit group of people and relationships you form with them in the sport carry on for years. Michael said the team would go out for dinner and after the race there would be 20 people in Avalanche race team shirts, crew members and spouses of crews in those shirts representing the team and more so the Avalanche family. Some members of the team included mechanics Chad Kylo, who most recently was a part of the Team Arctic all Finish race team. Another member was Mike Bergad, Cody Bratton for the mechanics. For the racers of the professional team, Avalanche had a full stable of riders from junior, sport, women, semi-pro, and then the pro racers. Most pro teams back in that day didn't have the various levels of racers that they did usually just a pro or a semi-pro. This innovative tactic that the Glefkies applies is now applied to more teams, building that transitional rider for the future of the team. The racers included the following for them. Pro racer Mike Schultz, the number five, semi-pro rider who transitioned to pro the 255 of Andrew Johnstead, pro women's rider Kylie Abramson, David Glefke was a sport rider, and they also had James Johnstead, the younger brother of Andrew. Through all the years, I asked Michael, what were some of the highlights of Avalanche Racing? He said it was with the 2006 and 2007 season, Avalanche won the semi-pro open and stock classes with Andrew Johnstead and the pro women's with Kylie Abramson. An additional highlight of that year was Avalanche Racing winning the marketing team of the year. Part of that was an idea that Michael came up with called Crew Member for a Day. The premise for this contest was a fan would enter and they could join the team for the whole entire day on that weekend. They would see the ins and out of a professional team, follow the team for that day, and help announce a race in a booth and meet other pro racers. Avalanche did this every race for a couple of seasons. Doing this might be an inconvenience for some teams because it's race day for crying out loud. Your hands are full trying to manage a team, but the Glefkies welcomed the fans and enjoyed it. One last thing he mentioned was the sponsors and the relationships they had with them. Michael said we had great sponsors, the best, and truly appreciated them. With all the success that Avalanche had, why did they exit the sport? Well, with the 2008 recession, Snowcross, like the rest of the world, wasn't exempt. Glefke said that players pulled back race funding tremendously for teams, as well as the whole industry. Parts Unlimited wanted to stay in, but would have had less money, and they wanted to run the same gear as the year before. Also, his oldest son was going to be going off to college, so coupled with the economic times, it was just fate. If I can stress any one aspect 
of Avalanche Racing's legacy, it's this. They really were second to none for their fan appreciation and also with their sponsors. Mike and Bonnie love the snowcross community. Michael said he watches the snowcross races today, usually in the company of Jamie Cheney. So thank you for watching. If you like this, please like and subscribe this video. And if you have any memories from Avalanche, comment below, I'd love to see them. I also would like to personally thank Michael Glefke for the input and great conversation that I had with him. And also want to thank Don Cross of Don Cross Photography for the photos she had and the one I used for the thumbnail. So thank you and we'll see you on the next one.